Hi, welcome to another radiology channel video on the paediatric elbow radiograph. I'm Dr. Jeremy Jones from radiopedia.org and today we're going to be looking at supracondylar fractures. Take a look at these three radiographs and see if you can identify those that have a supracondylar fracture. If you're not already viewing this in high definition, I suggest you do so. You can always pause the video if you need more time. The elbow joint is made up of the humerus, the ulna and the radius. The radial head sits in the radial notch of the ulna and is surrounded by the annular ligaments. It sits adjacent to the capitellum, which is central in the elbow. When the elbow is extended, the olecranon sits within the olecranon fossa. This is the narrowest point of the distal humerus and therefore the weakest point of the paediatric elbow. If we apply force to the capitellum, the supracondylar portion of the distal humerus is the weakest area and therefore the area most likely to fracture. As such, supracondylar fractures are the commonest of the paediatric elbow fractures. They typically occur following a fall onto a hyperextended elbow. As with any fracture, complications include damage to local vessels such as the brachial artery and damage to local nerves such as the ulnar nerve, which can be damaged in severe displacement. A line drawn down the anterior surface of the humerus should intersect the middle third of the capitellum. Since the capitellum is displaced posteriorly in the vast majority of supracondylar fractures, this is an extremely helpful tool for demonstrating correct alignment at the elbow joint. Let's look back at our cases. In case A, if we draw a line down the anterior surface of the humerus, and then draw in the expected location of the capitellum, we can see that a force applied down the radius has displaced the capitellum posteriorly. In addition, there is an anterior fat pad indicative of an elbow effusion. There is also irregularity of the dorsal cortex that represents the fracture. If we move on to case B, we can draw in our anterior humeral line and the expected location of the capitellum. There is no capitellar displacement. However, there is a large anterior fat pad suggesting an elbow effusion, which has been caused by this longitudinal fracture through the radial neck. Let's move on to case C. Again, we can draw in the anterior humeral line and we can draw in the expected location of the capitellum. Again, force down the radius has caused posterior displacement of the capitellum. On this occasion, there's no evidence of an elbow effusion, but if you look carefully in the olecranon fossa, there is irregularity of the cortex caused by the supracondylar fracture. So we've seen two cases of supracondylar fractures, learned that they are the commonest paediatric elbow fracture, and subtle and easy to miss in certain circumstances. In these subtle examples, the anterior humeral line is key, it should always intersect the middle third of the capitellum, and where it doesn't, we should look for associated elbow effusions or minor cortical irregularities that herald the supracondylar fracture. Why not check out some of the other videos on Radiology Channel, including the other paediatric elbow radiograph tutorials.